Auto Line Daily is brought to you by Bridgestone, your journey, our passion. And by Dow Automotive Systems, improving durability and increasing design flexibility with Betamate structural adhesives at DowBetamate.com. Hello and welcome to Auto Line Daily. In today's show, Dodge slashes the price of the Viper, Jaguar and Scion show off new cars, and Hyundai says goodbye to the dude. But now let's get to today's top stories. Jaguar revealed the face of its BMW 3 Series fighter, the XE, back in July, and now it's showing off the rest of the car. And I have to say, I like the styling. It's not over the top, and to me, it just has that shape that will look good no matter what year it is, which is the same way I feel about the Tesla Model S. At the moment, Jaguar is only showing off the performance XES model that is powered by the same supercharged V6 that's available in the F-Type and mated to an 8-speed automatic transmission. 60 miles per hour can be hit in just under 5 seconds. Inside, the driver is greeted with similar dials to the F-Type. A laser head-up display is available, as is a suite of safety technology. It also gets the automaker's all-new in-control infotainment system, which boasts an 8-inch touchscreen. The XE will launch in the UK next year and will hit American shores in 2016. Last year, Renault announced it was teaming up with Belor, a French company that builds EVs for car sharing programs. And now we have more details on the partnership. Starting in the second half of next year, Renault will build Belor's blue car EVs. The two are also establishing a car sharing joint venture in Europe that will include vehicles from both Renault and Belor. And lastly, Belor has asked Renault to study the feasibility of designing, developing, and producing a new three-passenger EV that's equipped with a 20 kilowatt hour lithium metal polymer battery. Last month, sales of the Dodge Viper dropped by nearly 40%, and now the company is slashing the price of the supercar. 2015 Vipers and 2014 models still on dealer lots will carry a price tag of $85,000, that's 15 grand less than before. All I can say is what took so long. In addition to that, Dodge is offering current Gen 5 owners a $15,000 voucher towards the purchase of a new Viper. Production of the 2015 model kicks off at the end of the year and the car goes on sale early next year. If you're thinking of getting a Scion FRS but just wish it had a few more performance upgrades, well have no fear the Release Series 1.0 is here. Yeah, that's right, that's the name, Release Series 1.0. Kind of weird. Some of the additional features include a special yellow paint color, unique seat material, and an aero kit, as well as TRD quad tip exhaust system, lowering springs, steering wheel, and shift knob. The manual version comes in a shade under $31,000, including destination charges, while the automatic is about $1,000 more. But if you're interested, make sure you hurry, only 1,500 have been produced. Well, Hyundai is ditching the dude. For the past seven years, actor Jeff Bridges has been the brand's voice in TV commercials. But the company just announced that actor Paul Rudd will take over that role, starting with a new ad campaign for the 2015 Sonata. The dude doesn't abide. And coming up next, should mainstream brands be worried about luxury brands coming down market? We'll be back right after this. Here's another great thing about the all-around performance of our Dueler tires. A comfortable, quiet ride. Oh. At Bridgestone, our passion for performance knows no bounds. Luxury brands are starting to come down market and offer less expensive cars that are priced the same as mass market brands. That was one of the topics discussed on last week's AAH, and it sparked this conversation. Look, this is a big threat to the mass market brands. Uh, last week I got to drive uh, the Acura TLX. What a great car. I'm telling you, this is, could, could be a turning point, at least product-wise, for Acura. And what struck me is, it starts out at about 30 grand, maybe 31, something like that. And then as you add stuff up, I can, you can get it over 40, easily over 40. But the point is, is that these luxury brands are bringing luxury attributes down into price points where the mass market brands are playing. And they're bringing in 
much more sophisticated suspensions, a lot more noise attenuation, kind of attention to detail, um, definitely better brakes. You know, uh, the, the bones of the vehicles are better. Now, the mass market guys can com compete right now because they're just ladling on more equipment. So even though they're the same price, the mass market brands tend to give you more content yeah. per dollar. I, I mean, but I, the luxury guys are giving you a better car. Yeah, I mean, I just, I was, I was in an A3, I don't know, a month or two ago, and it was $37,000, and it didn't have automatic climate control. <laughs> That's kind of, you can get that on a Passat. Yeah, I'm like, hey, where... I, would, well, I just I expect that yeah. in an Audi. Well, yeah. you do, and that's that's some of the problems as they decontent to get their prices down. But still, as I say, why buy a Ford when you can so have a Mercedes? Okay, but see, but, the, but you're saying the, the the fundamental bones of the car are better that you're getting from the premium brand. But I think what Dave is saying is that if I'm buying a premium brand car, I want premium brand amenities that go along with that. I expect so, a certain yeah. level. A certain of level. So, yeah. right. so the yeah. question becomes, does the, does the average consumer who's just going out there to buy a car, the average consumer who's not going to take the car through the S turns at, at high rates of speed and, and slam on the brake and do all that stuff that we like to do when we have the chance to do that, right? Yeah, in the five minutes a day that you might have a chance to do yeah. that. And, and, yeah, okay. right. and, and so what are they looking for? And they're probably looking for automatic climate control, and they're not looking for, you know, a well, extraordinarily good suspension system. Joining John and Gary for that show are Joe White from the Wall Street Journal and Dave Sullivan from Auto Pacific. You can watch that entire show right now on our website, autoline.tv. And tune in for this Thursday's Autoline After Hours. Joining John and Gary will be Russ Rudisuli the head of engineering at SRT, and he'll be bringing in the new Challenger Hellcat. You're not going to want to miss that, so tune in this Thursday at 6 p.m. Eastern Time at our website, autoline.tv. But that's it for today's show. Thanks for watching, and please join us again tomorrow.